So guys, after a long, long while, though I went through a ton of crap and experiments to try and get this thing working how I wanted it to, through all of that, I finally finished it and I'm making this video for you guys. And here it is. So this is the gun I like to call Boosted Dart Tit V1, or BD for short. You don't understand the name at this point, but don't worry, I'll get to that eventually. But first, let's start by talking about the modifications to this gun. So what I've done is I've started with a stock long shot and done a ton of modifications to it. So let's talk about the internals a little bit. So this this gun has a 17 30 seconds brass breech. So what that means is the brass tube that actually fits over the darts is 17 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. However, I must say even with the brass breech, this gun does not seal 100% due to the fact that I did not completely seal the air chamber in this gun. But that's all right, you're just losing a little bit of air velocity there. So this gun is capable of firing Stefan slugs. Basically, they're darts made out of foam back rod with a washer in the head and then also a felt tip on it. The magazine that goes with this gun is actually designed to only except step and slugs. And as a result of these modifications, this gun can no longer fire streamlined darts. I kind of originally wanted it to also fire streamlined darts, but it just didn't work out that way. But overall, I'm pleased with that decision I made when I was building it. Something notable about this gun also is that I modified it to make it two-hand or one-hand primable. And that is possible by the priming bolt being up here on the jam door. The reason it is no longer down here is because if you were to try and one-hand prime it from down here, then it would put quite a bit of strain on the bolt sled and you really don't want that, especially in a brass breech. So whenever you pull back the priming bolt, the jam door moves a little bit instead of the bolt sled moving and warping. So it's a lot better this way so you don't mess up your bolt sled and your gun effectively. This gun now has a K26 spring from McMaster Car. In case y'all don't know what that is, I think I'll leave a link below. This spring is almost at full compression but not quite entirely. So it's a really, really powerful spring. It actually takes about 12 pounds of force this way in order for you to pull it all the way back in the catch to catch the end of the plunger. So what that means is when you prime it back like this, your arm is not actually parallel with the motion of the bolt. And so you're actually having to use more force than 12 pounds to prime this thing. I knew that it was going to be difficult to prime this thing going in. I mean, one hand priming a K26, yeah, that's pretty extreme. But I'm a decently strong fellow, I can deal with it. But it's one hand primable now and I really can't argue with that. You have to be a little bit careful when you're doing that though because it does feel very strange whenever you're doing that. The jam door is actually trying to go left and right and basically try and put the shell out like that, even though it's still screwed together. But I really hope it doesn't fail anytime soon. That's all I can say about that. So one of the most obvious things about this gun is I've integrated a Titan on the bottom of this long shot. Cut it down a whole bunch. I think it looks pretty good. But yes, it's very noticeable. And because of this being on the front, it is a little bit front heavy. But that's okay because I knew it was gonna be that way going in. The pump for it is all the way back here. I was debating putting it on the front, but I think that would just be too huge and too much weight on the front. I think I made a good decision there. The pump is here and the line for the 
pump runs all the way up to here. It's pretty jam-packed in here with all the stuff. You could probably see that from some of the pictures, but I got it to work, so I'm happy about that. It has a key ring trigger right here. The key ring is linked to the Titan right here because it's not a perfectly straight line. I did the best I could, but with all the hardware and stuff in here, it's not a completely straight wire. So it is rubbing a little, and at some point, it's probably going to snap and you're going to have to replace it. But that's okay. You shouldn't actually be pulling this thing way too much because obviously, you're not going to be using it but once with this huge rocket. All right, so now onto the paint job. So I'm just going to use the white vinyl dye base coat to try and get everything even. And then I use some automotive paints. This happens to be Duplicolor Perfect Match. Uh, I believe it's called Inferno Red Matte. So that's that. And for some of the other pieces on this gun, I use this engine paint. I use this sparingly in a few other separate parts. I use this on the bolt and then also on this piece. Also for the detailing, I use some modeling enamels. This gold is not exactly the same as this gold. However, it works and it's just about close enough. Like I use this enamel a lot. I used it here and here and here and places like that and on this part. And then I also use this really kind of electric darker lightish green. I don't know how else to describe it. It's on a few places here. You can see it here on the bandolier strap and then in the lettering and down here. I hand painted all the logos, the Nerf and this and this. So they don't exactly look perfect, but that's good enough for me. And then lastly, I use some Rust-Oleum clear gloss. This is the semi-gloss, but I'm out of the gloss. That is what I used. I think I did a layer and a half basically of that. It's not the most even paint job in the world, but I still think it looks pretty good. I'm still gonna protect this thing though with my life though, because it's my baby. So you may be wondering wondering if there was a theme with this blaster when I was building it in the color scheme. Maybe it was supposed to look like Iron Man, maybe that's what y'all are thinking. But I'm here to dispel that and tell you what it actually is supposed to resemble. This gun was actually made to look like the gauntlet form of the boosted gear. This boosted gear is from an anime called High School DxD. I've always liked the design of that piece of equipment from the anime. Whenever I was building this, I was like, hey, I can make this work. So I made its color scheme match it. Basically, I kind of gave it these spikes here. These are actually pretty like, yeah, pointy spikes, so I gotta be careful with those. But also I have uh, the winglet things here that you see in the picture like that. And then you also have this little thing. These are kind of like the orb things you see on there. And then I have the gold. There's quite a bit of gold compared to the boosted gear, but that's all right. To be honest, I really wanted to put like a huge claw right here, but like I said, it would have been too big and too bulky and too weighty. I also wanted to do electronics work, so to make it light up like it is in the anime, but that's a little bit above my pay grade. I don't quite have the knowledge to get that all right with the resistors and stuff. However, I am taking circuits pretty soon in college, so I'll definitely be on that. And with my next gun, I'm probably going to try some electronics work. But I'm content with this one and the way it looks. I'm really glad with how it came out. And also, the name of this gun is related to the anime. Remember I said it's called the Boosted Dart Tit V1. So it's based off the Boosted Gear, Boosted Dart. See what I did there? Lily, really, you like that? And as for the tit v1 part, so this will make a lot more sense now. So it happened whenever I was cutting out the titan shell that it only left the word tit right there whenever I cut it off. So I decided to totally go with that. So it's tit and then on the other side you have the V1 right there. It says V1. So it's the Boosted Dart Tit V1 or BD. But the reason that the tit is relevant is because of the anime that this gun is based off of. So like I was saying earlier, it's based off the anime High School DxD. So this anime is what you would call an Eki anime, which is uh, a certain genre which has some things in it, I should say. So uh, that probably kind of explains why I named this thing the Tit V1. It's weird to hold this thing left-handed, but this is probably the better side anyway. Totally makes sense now that it's called the Tit V1 because High School DxD has some very titular characters in it and some very titular action going on in it. <laughs> I don't really care what y'all think of me. I love that anime. For an Eki anime, I ha really have to give it points for really having quite a bit of story. Although it is pretty much all silly. There is some really good story and some good lore behind all the stuff, like the stuff like the boosted gear. Like there's different types of sacred gears that are created by the dragons, which control the universe. It's a really interesting anime. There's a manga and a light novel, I believe. I think the light novel came first. I'll have to check up on that. But yeah, y'all should really check it out sometime if you're comfortable with that sort of thing that I'm showing y'all. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this blaster came out. I will not be selling this blaster anytime soon. It's my personal gun and I will not be selling it anytime soon. But enough yammering. It's time to show you guys this gun's power and how it fires. I have six Stefan slugs in here. I'm going to shoot all of them and I'll show you where the greatest grouping of them are to give you a range. I'll give you both a flat and an angled test as well as a flat and angled rocket test. So here we go. I'm going to show you guys how it primes like this. 
So yeah, it is pretty strong. It is a pretty hefty prime, like I said before. But yeah, I got a prime now, so I'm gonna shoot flat right here. This. So, yep. It's one. It's two. Three. It's four. And that's five. And that's six. And I'll do the rocket. 20 pumps is about right. Here we go, flat shot. There's that. So let's go see where they landed. You can kind of see that there's like three darts right here. There's one right there. There's one right there. There's also one right there. So I'd have to say the grouping, the best grouping is about 60 feet from where we shot over there. 60 feet flat, not bad. All right, so I got it all loaded up here again. Now I'm gonna do about a 45 degree angle. That's one, that's two, that's three. These are gonna be a pain to find later. That's four, that's five. That's six. All right, now I'm gonna do the rocket as before. All right, so here we go with the rocket. 45 degrees. So yeah, there you go, over there. So here's the rocket at like 54 feet, so that's pretty good. So I see one of the darts is out here at 100 feet, and then there was one over there at about 90. Not finding much more here, so I'm gonna have to say the average of that is like about 95 feet. We shot from way over there at the tripod, if y'all see that. So yeah, it's got really, really awesome range, so that's great. So something else I wanna demonstrate to you guys of how close and how hard this thing hits at close range. So I got a piece of cardboard here, and I'm gonna shoot some stuff and slugs at it. So here we go, I'm standing about right here. So it's a... Uh, some good stuff in there. It's not quite going through, but I mean, you know, it's still pretty good. There's another one. So, yeah. So basically it penetrated it on these two at least. Um, I'll show you on the back. This one kind of hit in a dent, so it kind of went inward instead of breaking, but I'll show you guys. It uh, basically went through, it just didn't penetrate. It basically broke it all the way through, it just didn't penetrate it. So yeah, you really don't want to get hit with this thing at close range or it's gonna hurt. It really does suck. So I'm glad I was finally able to get this video out to you guys. I'm glad I was able to get some Nerf content out to you guys for a change. And I hope that I can bring you some more in the future. So one of the next videos I'm gonna be maybe wanting to make is a rant video where I talk about some things that I want to change on the channel possibly. But also I want to get you guys' input. I know that's not correct English, but I wanted to get your guys' input on what I should maybe talk about. If there's anything that's really pissing you guys off right now, maybe maybe it's about YouTube or just about the world or about Nerf or about anime or anything like that, just let me know, post it down in the comments, and I might get to it in the video. So I hope to keep making quality content for you guys. I'm going back to college really soon, so it's going to be hard to get videos out. So I ask that you guys be patient with me but I'm gonna keep trying to get those Ruby reactions out on time. So I have a dopey cameraman back here at the moment. Do you want to say hi? Hello, people. Look, Look at this too. beard. Look at that. It's glorious. This is my friend. He's gonna get his YouTube channel up running sometime. Um, I'll shout him out whenever he does. Look forward to that. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank you guys so much for watching. So I hope this video was a nerf for you. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye, guys.